morning, folks. Sammy and JW here headed down to one of our farms to check a few uh, snares down here. We've had some luck over the last week or so, managed to catch a couple red foxes. Um, what do you have to say about today, Pop? How are you feeling about the luck? Well, the the temperature and the uh, barometric pressure last night was pretty good, so I'm optimistic. Yeah, I'm feeling the same. Uh, last night was one of the nights where we've been having a big cold front with a lot of wind and everything switched last night, especially since last week was the full moon. Any thoughts on that? Well, the moon's not coming up now till after midnight, so uh, that, of course, that helps us when we're doing predator calling at night. But uh, it also uh, limits the visibility of the canine to see the snare uh, when they're walking through the woods or the brush or whatever. If you have a full moon, of course, my snares are dull looking anyway, but uh, with the full moon, they still can have the ability to see possibly the outline of the snare and uh, refuse it, get a refusal. Absolutely, absolutely. And with the way the weather's been, we used to have some footholds set but unfortunately, with the, the, the drastic change in temperature and a lot of rain we had, it kept the ground frozen most of the time. So it was really hard for uh, us to keep everything set and uh, keep it maintained for overnight catches. But we're going to look forward to see what we got down here today. Yeah, well, I was using peat moss anyway, so the frozen part didn't matter. It was the uh, melting snow and then freezing it in the peat moss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The snow melting and making the, excuse me, peat moss a little soggy, and then they would freeze. Do you think we caught any? <laughs> Catch any? Yeah. Well, I hope so. Me too. You're watching the Stevens Family Outdoors. Have a great day. All right, we're down here at the farm checking snares, and uh, we pulled up and see the red fox. back here and get my crappers help it. Okay, it's another big male. And um, as you see, I got him by the hips. And as I explained to you before, that I'm setting for coyotes. So my loop is 10 inches um, and I'm about 9 or 10 inches off the ground so he must have jumped through and uh, his back legs caught it and closed it up on him <coughs> and uh, of course it's not a, a deadly uh, catch like that but it does hold them here until I get here and can dispatch them humanely so uh, if you look here It's an old cattle trail that when the snow was on, I found uh, coyote and fox tracks coming through on this trail here. Now he's got it maxed out pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and dispatch him and uh, I'll sit the set back and show you how it goes.
And as you can see, not only does the sticks Pop used to work as a control arm, poke the snare on, but it also acts as like a brace so we can put like small twigs, small sticks, and as you see, like this to, to make the box when it travel the path of least resistance. And as you said too, as you see, it also acts as a guide as well, so anything the size of a fox and smaller will usually go underneath through the loop. Anything the size of a white-tailed deer, which is common in our area down here, will jump and you don't ever have to worry about that uh, the aspect of getting a deer in the snare. It's about nine inches off the ground. And um, now a coyote may jump that, but I don't have any choice now because the fox done tore up the set and this is the best I can make it back without being too obvious. Um, to a kayak. Have a great day. Got one more snare to check. Alright y'all, you're watching Stevens Family Outdoors.